Now the second, the second um, scenario is it, it, the responsibility lies on a third party. And I think this is, uh, this is where there's a, a bit of a gray line between this one and the next one I'm going to, um, to mention. But the second scenario is the responsibility lies on a third party. And that third party, uh, number one, the first one I want to touch on here is, I'll just go to 2 Corinthians, because this is the only verse I could really think of. <coughs> and we'll just read a passage of scripture here. Is when it lies on a third party, it could be satanic or demonic, right? They'll say like, well, they couldn't believe. And the verse that really just sprang to mind when I thought of a satanic or a demonic reason why a person uh, cannot believe the gospel or can, did not hear the gospel, you think of that verse, in whom the God of this world hath blinded their eyes, mm -hmm. right? So we'll read through this passage and I'll just give you a, th a couple of thoughts that I have. Reading from 2 Corinthians 3.12, Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished, which is talking about the old covenant, but their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. So I just want you to know, the reason why I'm reading from, because the, the, the verse I mentioned that we're all thinking about is in 2 Corinthians 4. But the reason why I'm starting from 2 Corinthians 3 is because I think it actually has to do with it because they're all connected. We just have a chapter division there. I just want you to note there, verse 14, where it says, but their minds were blinded, right? For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. So what they're saying here is when Moses came down from the mountain, remember his face was shining, he put a veil over it to cover the glory of that old covenant. But now that old covenant is, is abolished, but he's saying that that veil that was covering them from understanding the Old Testament is still there because they do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they read the Old Testament, that veil where they cannot steadfastly look on it is still there. And that's, that unbelief is what is blinding them, right? Because their, the minds were, their minds were blinded because the, when, the, when they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they turn to the Lord, that veil is then taken away. So one way I understand this is it's actually their unbelief. It's their lack of faith on Christ that is keeping that veil there. But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. And now we get into chapter 4, uh, where we get into that. Therefore, so it is linked, because it's saying, because of what we just read in chapter 3, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, and not of us. Now I'd say, you know, if, you, if a person takes the view that, it, it, that the responsibility of somebody not hearing the gospel or going to hell lies on a third party, and in this case we're talking about a satanic or demonic influence, one way you could take this verse is saying, well, it's the God of this world is blinding them from being able to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. So the horse is, you know, they're being blinded by this God of this world, which is Satan, and therefore they cannot believe. But another way, you know, and this is some food for thought, I'm happy to discuss this with you guys as well, but you know, in chapter three, when it was saying that, the, remember the veil covered Moses, and now the veil is still on their heart, even though um, the, the Old Testament has been abolished. But remember it said, if it turns to the Lord, that veil is gonna be taken away. So I can understand from that, that the responsibility is still on the person, why they're being blinded. So it's not the, it's not the veil's fault, that they can't see the old covenant. It's their unbelief 
is the reason why the veil is still there. And that's why it says their minds were blinded, because the veil is covering them from understanding the Old Testament. So if we take that understanding and try and understand this verse, is it saying that the God of this world is blinding their mind and therefore they cannot believe? Or is it because they don't believe, where it says here, um, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. So is the God of this world only blinding their eyes because they don't believe? Like the veil in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. So that's, that's another way you can understand it to say, you know, well, it's not the satanic influence that's responsible for them going to hell. But if they do not believe, that veil of the satanic influence is there and that's why they don't understand anything from the Bible. You know, like the, the, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So, that's one, uh, one third party. It could be a satanic or demonic spirit, and, and I gave you the two, two views there. It could be, hey, it is satanic. You know, and then that way, that, that's what's causing them to go to hell. And, you know, even me and Michael sometimes discuss, you know, is that why we have to pray to remove that satanic spirit so that they can believe? So that's one view. Or the other view is they have rejected the grace of God and that's why the God of this world is able to blind them from the truth, the truths of God, God's world and not letting the light of that glorious gospel that otherwise would shine um, in their heart. 